All right, so to graph tangent y equals tangent of x, the two things that, we're, that we want to figure out is where is tangent equal to zero and where is tangent undefined, okay? And so to do that, the way that I like to think about that, remember tangent is sine of x divided by cosine of x, all right? So tangent will be equal to zero when sine of x is equal to zero, okay? Tangent will be undefined when cosine of x equals zero because you can't divide by zero. So then we can use the period for tangent or the formula for the period for tangent to help us figure out other places where the graph is going to equal zero or be undefined. Now, the period for tangent is different than the period for sine, cosine, secant, and cosecant. Sine, cosine, secant, and cosecant all have a period of 2 pi. So the way that you figure out the period when graphing those is use the formula 2 pi divided by omega. The period for tangent is pi. So to find the period, we need to say pi divided by omega. Okay. Now, of course, the period for y equals tangent of x would be, that's a 1, that's just pi divided by 1, so the period is pi. We use that. And places where we figure out, we just need to figure out one place where sine is equal to zero, sine of x is equal to zero, and one place where cosine of x is equal to zero. So recall the sine curve. So if we have a sine graph here, here's a sine graph. We know that the sine graph starts at the origin. So that's a place where sine is equal to zero. The sine of zero equals zero. So what that means is, if the sine of zero is equal to zero, at that same place, the cosine of zero, remember, is equal to one, and tangent is sine divided by cosine, so at zero, tangent is equal to zero. The tangent of zero is zero. So that is one place where we know that the tangent graph will cross the x-axis. So when x equals zero, the tangent graph crosses the x-axis. All right. So that's one place. We figured out one place. That was our main goal, or one of our main goals. Now, when is cosine of x equal to zero? Just figure out one place. Let's see if we have a cosine graph here. All right, here's a cosine graph. Think about where does it cross the x-axis? Well, usually it crosses the x-axis the first time. If we're just looking at y equals cosine of x, it crosses the x-axis at pi over 2 because the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, right? 
cosine of pi over 2 is 0. The sine of pi over 2 is 1, so that's 1 divided by 0. So that's a place where tangent will be undefined. The tangent of pi over 2 is undefined. So when x equals pi over 2, tangent is undefined. So we can use that value to help us figure out other places. Now the way that we figure out other places is we take the period, which for just y equals tangent of x, the period, we say if it's pi divided by 1 or just pi. So now if we know one place where we cross, Add pi to that or subtract pi to, from that as many times as you want. It's going to cross at every one of those places. So, and the same thing for where we have a vertical asymptote where tangent's undefined. If we know one place, then we add or subtract pi from that as many times as we want. And that's going to be other places where we will have vertical asymptotes. Let me show you. So if I just want to graph y equals tangent of x, we could draw several periods pretty fast. The key is knowing where do we cross and where are we undefined one time for each. So we're going to cross, we said, when x equals 0, the tangent graph crosses the x-axis. So that's at 0. I can add or subtract the period from that as many times as I want to get other places. So if I add pi, that'd be 1 pi. Add pi again, 2 pi. It's going to cross there, it's going to cross there. Okay, I can go in the other direction. I could subtract pi. That'd be at negative pi. It's going to cross there. If I subtract pi again, that'd be negative 2 pi. So it's going to cross there. All right. Now, we said that at pi over 2, tangent's undefined. Pi over 2 is between 0 and pi. Alright, so let's say it's right here. We're going to have a vertical asymptote at pi over 2 because that's where it's undefined. Alright, now if you add pi to that, pi plus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. So another place where tangent's undefined. You could subtract pi from pi over 2. You get negative pi over 2. That's a place where we're going to have a vertical asymptote. Subtract pi from that again, you get negative 3 pi over 2. So that's another place where I'm going to have a vertical asymptote. All right. Now, uh, Another thing to remember about the tangent graph, if you figure out all the places where the graph is going to cross the x-axis, um, between places where the tangent graph is going to cross, there's always a vertical asymptote right in the middle. All right, So you could use that to help you graph it as well. Now, so how do I graph it? Well, the domain for tangent is all real numbers. So the way that we show that, remember like what was the tangent of pi over 6 or pi over 4 or pi over 3? Even if you don't remember those values, you know that they're all positive. So the graph goes up and to the right at the origin and down and to the left. And it's going to do that every place that it crosses, up and to the right down to the left, up and to the right, down to the left, up and to the right, down to the left, up and to the right, down to the left. So we have five complete periods here. All right, let's see what that looks like in a graphing utility. Right, basically the same thing that we just did. Take a look at the graph of y 
equals 2 tangent of 1 half x. So the first thing that we can do really quick is we can figure out the amplitude. And be the absolute value of 2 or 2. And we can figure out the period. The period for tangent and cotangent is pi divided by omega. So that's going to be pi divided by 1 half. Flip and multiply the fraction. And you get pi. Now, where will we use these two values? The amplitude is just going to make, if, if the amplitude is greater than 1, that's going to make the graph increase. So that's just going to make the, the, I guess, the bow in the graph of y equals tangent of x. It's just not going to be as much of a bow there. All right. The period will be used to find, once we know one place where the graph crosses the x-axis, we add and subtract the period as many times as we love from that place to find other places. Once we find one vertical asymptote, then we can use the period to find other vertical asymptotes. Okay. So, the real problems here is to figure out where is the graph going to cross and where is the graph going to be undefined. Now, the graph is going to cross at 0. Tangent, as long as you don't have a phase shift, the graph of tangent will always cross at 0. So, it doesn't matter what's in front here. It's 1 half x. It's not going to change anything. Because if I plug in x equals 0, 1 half times 0, is zero. Tangent of zero is zero. Zero times two is zero. So it's always going to be zero. So that is one place that we know we're going to cross. All right? Where is it undefined? This is a little trickier. Okay? It's going to be write down one place that you know y equals tangent of x is undefined. So, recall that the tangent of pi over 2 is undefined. Why is that? Because tangent is sine over cosine. So that sine of pi over 2 over cosine of pi over 2 Sine of pi over 2 is 1, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Right. So we need to remember, one place that tangent is undefined is at pi over 2. Well, that's not going to help me um, right away. That is an important fact. But since I have 1 half inch here, I'm going to have to figure out, what would I have to plug in here for x? that whenever I say it times one half, I'll get pi over two. The way you do that, since this is one half x right here, say one half x equals pi over two. And if we solve for x right here, this will tell us what I would need to plug in so that the tangent would be undefined on this problem. If you divide both sides by one half or multiply both sides by two, doing the same thing, flip and multiply, you're multiplying by two over one, pi over two times
times 2 over 1 is just equal to pi. So what that means is at x equals pi, this function that I have, this y equals 2 tangent 1 half x, will be undefined. You need to check yourself. If you were to take this pi and plug it in right here, that will be 1 half times pi or pi over 2. And the tangent of pi over 2 is undefined. All right, so one place where we will cross is x equals 0. One place where the graph will be undefined is x equals pi. So if I want to sketch that, I'm going to put a place where I would cross. So we're going to cross at x equals 0. So I'm going to put a point here. That's x equals 0. Now if I use the period 2 pi, I can find another place where this is going to cross. 0 plus 2 pi would be 2 pi. Just mark out a space right here and name it 2 pi. And you could find another place if you want. You could add 2 pi again. That would be 4 pi. Now I can do the same thing uh, except go in the negative direction. I can subtract 2 pi. 0 minus 2 pi would be negative 2 pi. And I can find another just so I can kind of stay symmetrical. Subtract 2 pi again. Right, so that's some places where we know for sure this graph is going to cross. Now, we can use the fact that at x equals pi, this function is going to be undefined to write down our vertical asymptotes or draw vertical asymptotes. So if this is 0 and this is 2 pi, where will pi be? It'll be right in the middle, right? 0, 2 pi. Right in the middle of 0 and 2 pi is pi. How can I figure out what value is here right in the middle of those? 2 pi plus 4 pi is 6 pi. 6 pi divided by 2 is 3 pi. So right here, there's a another point and you can fill in your graph on both sides that way or you can use the fact that we know at pi we're going to have a vertical asymptote because that's where this function is undefined then use the period of 2 pi pi plus 2 pi is 3 pi notice that not only is 3 pi between 2 pi and 4 pi it's also a place where we have a vertical asymptote. That's not a coincidence. Okay? Places or points that are exactly between places where the graph is going to cross for tangent and cotangent, if you can figure out this point right here, or figuring out places where it crosses, you can then figure out the vertical asymptotes go without even doing any of this work over here. Let me repeat that. If you just write down all the places where this graph is going to cross using the fact that the tangent of zero is always going to be zero and use the period, then we can find other places by taking any two consecutive points adding them together, and dividing by 2. That will always give you a place where you're going to have a vertical asymptote. So what that would allow you to do is do none of this work right here. You know, if I just had these points here, then I could say, okay, here's 0, here's negative 2 pi. 0 plus negative 2 pi is negative 2 pi. 
divide that by 2, that's negative 1 pi. So right here at negative 1 pi, you're going to have a vertical asymptote. So you can either do that and speed things up, or you can use the fact that we know well, we have to have a vertical asymptote at x equals pi because that's what we worked out and figured. And now use the fact that this graph will repeat every pi. So you could say, I'm oh, sorry, this graph will repeat every 2 pi. So you could say plus 2 pi and get 3 pi. You could say plus 2 pi again, 5 pi. Or you can go in the other direction. You can say pi minus 2 pi. That gives you negative 1 pi. Negative 1 pi minus 2 pi. That gives you negative 3 pi. Now, once we have all the places where the graph is going to cross and all the places where we have vertical asymptotes, for tangent, the way we will draw that graph is the places where we cross, we'll draw a line up and to the right and down and to the left. And we need to approach the vertical asymptotes on each side. Now, since this is a, this, the amplitude was 2, this is going to increase a little faster than normal. So up and to the right, down and to the left. And you do that at every point where the graph crosses. Hopefully I didn't confuse you too much, showing you two different ways to uh, where the graph has vertical asymptotes. Let me just refresh or, or uh, let me just review one more time what we did. The fastest way to graph this is to find the amplitude and the period. Then use the fact that this graph, we know since it's tangent at zero, will cross. So if we put a point at, at zero, we know the graph has to cross there. Now, the period is 2 pi. So if I say 0 plus 2 pi, that gives me another place where this graph crosses. You can add 2 pi again, add 2 pi again, or you could subtract 2 pi, subtract 2 pi, subtract 2 pi. All of those places, this graph, y equals 2 tangent 1 half x, is guaranteed to cross the x axis. Because that's places where function would be equal to zero. Now, you can go through and do all this work finding one place where it's undefined and use the period to find other places. Or, any two consecutive places where you know tangent cross, if you add those two x values together and divide by two, that will give you the point in you can figure out the point between two places where you know the graph crosses, you guarantee you have a vertical asymptote. That's the quickest way. Alright, so the very fastest way that I can give you a rough sketch would be we know that when x equals zero, for any tangent graph, you will always cross the x-axis. Right? x equals 0. Cross the x-axis. Now, the amplitude here is going to be 1. The period here pi divided by omega, or pi divided by what's in front of x, pi. So your period here is going to be 1. So we will not have a pi with our period. That's just going to change our scale on the x axis. Instead of having pi, here on the x-axis, 
we're just going to have our whole number integers, like 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. Alright, now we know that we cross the x-axis at 0. The period is 1. So if I add 1 to 0, I will be at another place where I cross the x-axis. If I add 1 again, that's another place. And you can go in the other direction. You can subtract 1. Subtract 1. So all of those are places where I'm going to cross the x-axis. Now, to find the vertical asymptotes, there's two ways. The way that takes a little longer is not the way that I'm going to do it first. I'll show you that way, but we're going to do the fastest way. So, to find the vertical asymptotes, take any two places you know the graph will cross, add those two x values together, and divide by two. That will be a place where you have a vertical asymptote. So, 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. So, we know we have a vertical asymptote here at x equals 1 half. Those the next two points. 1, 2. So, 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 divided by 2 is 3 halves. Three halves, we have a vertical asymptote. Alright, and you can do that for every one of these places that I'm going to draw vertical asymptotes. Now, to graph this, there was a negative in front, so every place that we cross, we need to go up into the left and down into the right. Make sure that you're approaching the vertical asymptotes as you draw your graphs, but you never touch or cross the vertical asymptotes. That's y equals negative tangent of pi x. Now, the longer, more mathematical way to find the vertical asymptotes would be to use the fact that the tangent of pi over 2 is undefined. Since we know that the tangent of pi over 2 is undefined, we could say, okay, well, what can I plug in right here for x so that I'm taking the tangent of pi over 2. The way you figure that out is you set pi x equal to pi over 2. To solve for x, you divide both sides by pi. Be careful here. Probably not something you've done very often. Pi over 2 divided by pi. So think about that like that's pi over 1 in the denominator and flip and multiply. Multiplying by 1 over pi. The pi's would cancel out and leave me with 1 half. So what that means is, we know for sure in x equals 1 half, this graph will have a vertical asymptote. Which we already figured out using our shortcut. To find other places where we have vertical asymptotes, we use the period. And the period for one half. So one half plus one is three halves. Or one half minus one is negative one half. Negative one half minus one is negative three half. So on and so forth. 